this is Anna Cortez. Welcome to How to Live It. On this episode, we're going to talk about how to get back on track after career break. I'm here with my friend, an incredible executive and life coach, Paula Omer, certified by Columbia University and has a lot of cross-cultural and a lot of experience in working with people on getting back on track. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Anna. It's a pleasure to participate in your show. And uh, so I've seen a lot of people lose self-confidence after they've been out of the workforce for a while. I read some studies that show that people have been out of the workforce for 11 months. I already show a feeling of, you know, lost of voice, uh, lost of self-confidence and really think that they have no ability to be who they used to be before they took a break. And you've worked with a lot of clients who have been out of the workforce for different reasons. Uh, what are some strategies that you think have helped your clients gain this self-confidence back and really take the steps to become who they want to be? This is a very, very interesting point. And this is something very, actually very common nowadays where like people decide to take on a different track to do something else with their careers. It's, it's for, for a variety of topics. It can be from hmm, an illness in the family, it can be because of uh, motherhood, it can be because of relocation, or even because they reached like certain point in their careers and they don't feel fulfilled. They would like to do something else. So the way the work starts, the way I approach that is with self-awareness. I believe everything starts with diving into your values, what really matters to you, So after that, you can start building your roadmap. So the step number one would be to get in contact with this internal compass that we say, which is like the values. And when I say values, I don't talk about like the general values that it's more like unique for everyone, like peace, love, family. That's very, that's more common, right? I I like to dive into some specific things that are unique for you. What is it that you need to experience in your life to feel that sort of fulfillment? Is it like a recognition? Is it success? Is it a lot of money? What is it? So that would be the step number one. And then the step number two would be to explore your strengths. What are you good at? What is it that you do that you don't see the time passing by? Looking at like your past experiences and in your life and asking you, when were you feeling really energized and really happy? What were you doing? What were you experiencing in those times? And then slowly we start building that roadmap. And once you have that, let's say, inner picture with the values, the strengths, the talents of the individual, we can start exploring options, which is like the final, let's say, step, stage of the process. And with the exploring options, we would do, uh, okay, given these are the values I want to experience in my life, these are the talents that I have, here are a few opportunities, careers, or I don't know, maybe setting up a business that I always dreamed of that I would like to try to explore. I want to go back to a point you mentioned now, which is one of the sources of frustration I had when I was feeling stuck and trying to read and research and go after books. And I want everyone to listen to this because, you know, a lot of information out there related to getting back on track after a career break is related to usually mothers Mm -hmm. who have had kids. Mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned a very important point, which is one of the reasons I'm building how to live it to be for anyone. Mm -hmm. It's not just for women. It's for anyone who wants to have a roadmap to create the life and the business that makes sense to themselves. Because I think people may be on a break, as you said, for many reasons. It could be parenthood. It could be, you know, a sickness in the family. It could be because they just want to take a break Mm -hmm. and explore other options. A sabbatical. A sabbatical. Mm -hmm. Or they've reached a point in their career, they're so frustrated, they want to explore something else. And I think we have to be able to give everyone Mm -hmm. the tools that they need and the strategies that they need in order to keep moving, Mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes, precisely. I, this is why I believe, Anna, that the first, if you do not have self-awareness, 
If you don't know who you are, what matters to you, what you are good at, it's very difficult to start exploring options. Because you might feel, for example, inspired by someone else's story and say, oh, I think I could be good at doing that. But if you don't really know who you are, what your particular strengths, and if this aligns with your personal values, you might end up either like, I don't know, hitting the wall or trying something and not feeling fulfilled. Something so, that doesn't make sense to exactly, you. Exactly, exactly. This is why I've came across so many executives and professionals that have reached a very successful point in their careers. They made a lot of money, they have recognition, they have success, and still they don't feel fulfilled and they feel guilty about that. Like, why can't I feel fulfilled if I've reached everything that I could potentially ever dream of? Usually it's because they are not in contact with themselves, with what matters to them, to really matters. And they are not living their life experiencing their values, their truth values. So that's, that leaves that sense of like unfulfillment and void. This is very powerful. Um, one of the things I've observed, not only with myself, mm -hmm. but with many people who have taken some type of a break or a change, is that we often forget all the qualities and all the successes we had before the break. So I, you know, moved back from Brazil to the US, so this transition drove me into this self-awareness um, sort of journey, but also a very big sense of loss of self-confidence and self-identity. I always felt before I was associated with something else, right? I was Anna from Goldman Sachs, I was Anna from Harvard mm -hmm. Business School, mm -hmm. I was Anna from Peninsula, and all of a sudden I was just Anna. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, okay, but then who am I? And I didn't feel like I was associated with something else. And it felt to me, and in talking to a lot of people who have gone through a career transition or have taken a break, that they basically forget all of the successes they had before, all the incredible things they've accomplished before they were on a break, mm -hmm. and they just don't see themselves as doing anything and all the potential they have to do something else. Mm -hmm. What are some of the tactics you think can help people retrieve all of the qualities and strengths, as you were saying, and, and successes they had and, and remember all the incredible things they accomplished before you know this change or this break they may be on. So one of the things I believe it's very powerful it's uh, an exercise that I call the timeline where you I like to put like the date where you were born and today's date and then we go together and try to identify the highlights during this timeline of your life from like childhood, college, professional life, everything, and the low points too. But about like three or five, not very, very specific, more general. This exercise usually helps one to identify what is it that was going on in their lives when they were feeling happier. So I believe with this small step, starts helping one identify what is it that like I was experiencing, what is it that I was feeling grateful for in that particular moment in time. So that's a step number one to start bringing this sort of awareness. Number two, I like very much to do so, something that I call a 360, which is a simple questionnaire, 10 questions about the person. And this person will share with like 20, 30, family members, ex-colleagues, childhood friends, new friends, asking questions about this person. Where do you see this person working? What, what are the qualities do you see in this person? Can you give examples? Even like if this person were to be in the cover of a magazine, which magazine would that be? Questions like that, you know, to bring back what you were precisely saying, what are the qualities or the, the characteristics of that person that calls the attention of other people? And we, in doing that, this sort of exercises, I believe that the client is start getting more in contact with the things that they are good at. So once you identify, okay, I'm, a very, I'm ex an extremely good communicator, let's say. I'm a very good analytical person. So given you have these strengths or qualities, how can you leverage those mm -hmm. in that new career or adventure that you are willing to take? 
I love this exercise. <laughs> I love it. Um, I mean, going on any new track can be very daunting. It can bring a lot of fear. It can bring a lot of questioning on your own uh, values and self-confidence. And Paula Omar is this incredible <laughs> executive and career coach who is helping us get some strategies to help you get back on track. So if you have been away from the workforce or you have to, you know, you want to embark on a new adventure, as you said, or there's this dream that you have always felt of something new you want to do, Paolo has given us some great tools today to help people get back on the track after being on a break. Thank you, Paolo, for being here. Uh, thanks us. for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you.